Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a special episode of Plastic Party. Today, we're going to talk about two things, two things only, and that's a pretty big lie because I end up rambling on as usual. Today, we're going to talk about uh, Traxxas Shark Oil, which is something I use to loosen up joints on figures. And the other one being is, why do I build Army Builders Part 2? I've been watching a lot of Black Dynamite, and I'm going to consider that an alternative uh, title card intro. So first things first, here is the Traxxas Oil. This is what I use. It is Traxxas Shark Oil. Um... It is using to basically lubricate parts of figures that have really tight joints and don't move because there's too much friction causing it, which will cause plastic to either warp or break. Now, literally, what I recommend is if you can't like use a Q-tip and just put one tiny drop on there and rub the area that needs the lubricant. Uh, the other being is that you can put a drop in there. You can clean out the excess later. But again, these are all choices you can make. If you can't see what I got going on, I'm going to move it up. T-R-A-X-X-A-S, Traxxas. So silicone shock oil, there you have it. Now I wanna move that off to the side. Um, it keeps it pretty simple. Like I said, you, you put it in the joint and it's very, very simple. But the other thing being is why do I build army builders part two? Um, I have a lot of army builders. I find a way to army build stuff, make it look cool. I just be doing all sorts of wild and crazy stuff. That's because that is my favorite type of photo. It really is. I love doing things like that. I have a blast doing it. Now, I have a bunch of random figures on the table. Don't know necessarily what I'm going to use just yet, but um, I, I love doing crazy cool stuff like that. Um, try not to curse because that's literally the case here. I want to curse. <laughs> but yeah, so a great example is, right, Icarus is your Superman archetype, right, here. So let's say we use Icarus. Icarus is your Superman archetype. This is the MCU Icarus, but I am not going to hold him to just that MCU nonsense. I don't care. It's whatever. I'm going to use him as his counterpart. counterpart. Um, now, Icarus fighting a bunch of Ultrons is not out of the question, right? It's one of those things where you can kind of do whatever. So let's say you had literal just a ton of Ultrons to kind of just, you know, use. So <laughs> you could do a bunch of cool photos. Let's, he's just looking down like, whatever. This could literally be a photo in itself once I fix, you know, the legging work here. But that can even be a photo in itself. And it's, it's pretty cool to do simple stuff like that. But let's say we, we wanted to break it down and do something even cooler, right? I do a ton of stuff like this. I even got some stands from my boy 796 Studios. So let's try to make a quick scene out of it. We're going to do a couple of things here because I, I want to have some fun and I want to show off cool scenes that I used to do. I don't I don't think I have my camera with me. I don't, I don't think I charged the battery. So I don't know if I'll be able to catch photos this time, but I, I really want to talk about this. So let's use a stand and a stand is I use stands to pretty much set up the first part of the photo. And that's always the the impact of where everything kind of begins at. Right. So let's move all of these guys. I use a stand as him right here, right? Even if I don't want to use the eye beams, I want to start off, let's say, with a punch. Let's keep it really, really simple. Like he's powering out or he's, uh, oh, yeah, let's do a powering out where he's kind of just plowing through them. Let's kind of, let's fix that, right? So let's get a another stand in there. And now this is what I do usually because it the, the, chain, the story changes as I kind of progress with the photo. It doesn't always finish the way I started. So let's say he's like powering out. This looks really boring, like as it is, right? So I try out a bunch of things. This is not working out for me. I don't really like the way this is coming out to be. I'm glad that got scrapped, right? So you can do, or at least what I'm gonna try to do is, instead I'm gonna do it this way. I wanna rotate this arm. And actually, it feels like your arm joint might be a little tight. Nope, it's not tight. Okay, cool. I was going to say, it might be time to use that Traxxas oil. <laughs> so, you know, I want to do some flying punching. Let's swap this one over to this one. And we'll do like a low ground one. Kind of have some fun here. And again, I appreciate you guys letting me ramble on because uh, that's literally what a video like this takes. I know a lot of people always ask me to do stuff like this, but a video like this 
basically takes me rambling on and you have to like sit here and watch the process like now see so now you start to do stuff like this this is where it gets a little crazy because now you're working out placement you're working out framing you're working out how are you going to do a bunch of stuff like this right so you're gonna make sure you gotta have your one guy who goes flying backwards and you want to place that in a way that it doesn't get too far in the way of Icarus, but just enough that it covers that that area, right? So look, now you have that one up there. You can leave somebody on the floor. Let's say if you don't want anybody to see any stands, you can hide a bunch of stuff like that. So now you have a weight and you have somebody covering the floor. You definitely want to have people in the foreground. That's also important you want to have foreground and background not not one you want to have both so you got to have your background guy who is going to fill in any sort of space for you because i have to shoot in a very tight area oh see he almost fell you want to make uh, uh. now we lost it now we lost it ah uh, that's a little bit of a bummer but now we can we can make something better out of it we could switch our angle up you got to make sure that you know little failures like that don't put you like off put you because there's going to be a lot of times where stuff is going to just fall and you know what like that you got to be okay with it because uh, uh, this setup takes a while it's not something that just gets done ever so quickly and i know i make it look good but this is from doing it for so long that it just looks that way because trust me it's not easy doing this at all so let's just try to recoup and do it again we know we had a guy fall so let's see if we can get him in a better pose, right? Oop. So let's see if we can get another pose, right? We're going to move you out of here ever so gently. And like I said, you know, we're working on something. We got something going here, and this is good, right? Let's say we can get another Ultron in there, trying to fight his way through. You know? But for the most part, we have like covered most bases. We still have a stand here that everyone can see. Normally, I don't care about kind of covering that up because the angles do it themselves, but I left it a little wide open. And that's because I'm just here literally making this up as we go. But watch this. Let's see right here. This is where this is the truth card right here for us. Because now our placement is they're still coming, but he's punching through one. So now we're going to try to get an angle that we can like fix that. So I'm going to take it right off my stand. If you guys can see, I got a bunch of stuff here. Right. How does that look for everybody? That looks pretty decent, right? We've got a very good angle. We're sorting it out. We got our Richard Manson acre is kind of having fun. So it's stuff like this. So I'm like, this is pretty cool. I like doing stuff like this. This is really cool. See? Now you can see, this is what holds up everything. Now y'all see the magic. So it's stuff like this that really makes me just, you know, this is where I have my fun. This is the fun for me part. Um, so this setup, as of this, took us about eight minutes. And then we're gonna snap it from a bunch of different angles. We're gonna do stuff like get our lighting right. Now for me, like let's say I wanted to do my lighting, I'm gonna cut on my lights in the background right and uh we're gonna hook them up see what's going on so let's see what we can do because i'm i want to give a full video and kind of really do this long drawn out thing with you guys so you guys can truly see my process right because everybody thinks this stuff i it's not easy it's not easy it takes a lot of practice it takes a lot of effort too and i want you guys to learn from it i want you to to get creative with it i don't want you to be scared to do things you know Let's swap around, our, our, let's move that up just a tad bit because our light's gonna get in the way eventually. So let's see what happens in a second when my lights power up. Assuming they ever do, they've been up, oh, there we go. They've been sinking for a while. So there's that weird sound. That's why I don't have the lights on in the background anymore. I'm sorry about that. But since Icarus is blue, let's aim for blue, right? So blue on blue. But let's say if you didn't want blue, I like having that nice orange tone you saw before. This gives you a nice vibrant look for setting it up. So yeah, now you see the kind of cool stuff and kind of concept that I come up with. I also have smaller lights 
that kind of let me hit certain angles and certain lights too. So uh, for instance, if I move this, right, I'll actually get much more light. So let's kind of fill this in. I'm gonna move my dial piece, right? And I like doing multi-lights, right? So you have all the yellow there, but let's say I wanna swap it out, give a little bit of blue in there like before, boom. But I wanna power it down just a little bit. And as you can see there, now we have a two-tone light. So again, I, I like having a lot of crazy cool options, but uh, I'm gonna turn off my light because I know that's gonna annoy people with that buzzing sound, right? And then we're gonna turn off the other. There we go. So yeah, now, uh, this is gonna sound crazy because uh, I didn't get a, a real photo of it, but normally when I'm done, I leave it up for a few minutes, but I know I'm not, I'm pressed for time with that. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna just knock it all down. We're just gonna literally knock it all down because uh, it, it was beautiful to see and I loved setting it up, but uh, you gotta have fun. You gotta move on to the next thing. So another thing I wanna talk about is the fact that why do I collect so many ninjas? <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell you why, but I love doing fights with ninjas. Uh, and I have a ton of articulated icons and ninjas. I literally just pulled it from my ninja draw. Like, <laughs> in case you want to see, like, I have a ninja, ninja draw. See, AI ninjas. And then there's purple ninjas. There's gray ninjas. You'll see red ninjas over here. Uh, we have blue and brown ninjas down there. So, yeah. And then let me get my uh, this stamp. So, yeah. So, I have some ninjas here. And I do ninjas because ninjas are versatile and cool. I also like the fact that with a lot of colors, you can have a bit of fun. Like these, I did against these. I had uh, did the Dark Knight Triumphant Batman with some purple ninjas. So, again, you can do squads of ninjas being cool and a bunch of stuff. Uh, for instance, I really got a bunch of ninjas for Ghost of Tsushima. I wanted to do him versus a bunch of ninjas. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, if it ever stops being delayed, uh, assuming I can get this video out at a really good, reasonable time. But as you can see, I can pose ninjas up and have a blast. And it's one of those things where the more ninjas I collect, the more I realize ninjas are a cool part of most comic book history. You can use them up against Blade. You can like add some cool vampire heads, or you can just have them just there. People. You really can't go wrong with ninjas. They've appeared in so many movies at this point. It's like, <laughs> how could you go wrong? So here is a cool AI quick pose with some ninjas. And again, this is the kind of stuff I just really have a blast with. So let's say you want to do something like fighting Spider-Man, right? How would you do Spider-Man? Because ninjas can get pretty versatile like him. So for him, it's more about like, maybe you want to dodge ninjas versus trying to fight them. Even with the super strength, it's like, oh, Especially like hand ninjas because they, they pretty much seem immortal. Like they have one focus and that's pretty much to murder until they can't function anymore. So let's try to do some cool Spider-Man stuff real fast, right? So let's say we did Spider-Man like doing some dodging stuff. So you have a kunai. So let's use you. And let's do... You trying to come over and, and do a little kunai slash. Let's swip it around because you would probably do it backhanded. But Spider Man's trying to dodge. There we go. Let's follow up. The, there we go. So we can lean that across, right? We can do. Oop, I kind of messed up. So let's say we do this right here. And it's like you trying to dodge it. You can lean him up against the Spider-Man for whatever reason you want. And then you can do another ninja coming from above. I'm going to assume I have some weapons here, but I don't know what I did with all mines right now. I think I was in the middle of doing way too much. But uh, yeah. So let's do another ninja from up top trying to come down. And we'll pretend he has a sword in his hands. <laughs> so you could do another one coming from above, right? Let's get it one more stand. Oh, I got a bunch of Ultrons in the way. And this is why we clean up after ourselves. This is why we clean up after every setup and not just leave stuff out. But again, I'm trying to cover what I can in a little bit of time that I have. So again, thank you for bearing with me. So off screen, I adjusted that leg. I popped the stand in there. 
And we're going to assume this ninja has a sword. Right? And then you can do one more. Oh, drop the hand. Then we can do one more try to kick or punch or attack from a different angle. And this is what I call like the three point, uh, three prong attack. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Baki as well. And you notice that in certain attacks, like you want to attack from the triangle attack. You want to make sure you cover all bases. So you have high, middle and low, right? So let's say you're trying to attack from below, like with a slide or something. Let's just use a slide for now. That's a terrible example, but let's just try to cover like a slide. But I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to change that. But let's say he did like a diving attack to try to aim low coming for his head. I don't think I have. Oh, here we go. Here's the low stand. Right? We have our low stand. In the low stand, we want to get right in that area of him seeming like he's going to attack. I know I have a much lower stand. I don't have it out right now. So we're going to pretend he was even lower. Because I have a super low stand. And he would have been attacking from the lowest point. But I can't get that in right now. I don't know where my super tiny stand is. But you can like get Spider-Man dodging. As you can see here. And this is the kind of things my wild imagination comes up with. Um, I like having a lot of fun with this kind of stuff. And, and to be honest... Oop, Stuff like that will happen. Exactly. So this is me keeping it real with you. Sometimes it doesn't hold up, which is why you'll have to scrap an idea or try it again. You really got to pick and choose what you're going to go for um, and have and have fun. Like despite it falling, the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm still having fun. The second it stops being fun, it's like whatever. You know what I mean? I hate that kind of stuff. I want to make sure things are always fun for me. So, yeah. Let's, let's see what I can do with you. Now that uh, I've lost that pose, let's see. And if anybody's wondering at this point, are you just skimming through this video? The stands are from 796, 796 Studios on IG. That's my main man, Mario. Uh, if you go there, tell him that I sent you from this video. So that way he can be mad at me later. Um, <laughs> he's going to be very mad because he's not selling these stands right now. So, But he does occasionally do them. So, yeah. These are like the fine point of posing. Our ninja's off, but let's say our ninja was behind him. And so yeah, you can have some fun. But yeah, I hope that this video has done you well. I hope that it helps you. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna call it. <laughs> and I, d I definitely winged it. Like I did not plan any of this. I just said that I wanted to, to finally do a little bit of uh, more helpful videos and I hope that this helps you. Thank you so much for making it through however long this video is because I'm trying not to look. It'll make me anxious. And I appreciate you guys definitely watching. I like that uh, I'm able to keep it real with you and have uh, the fun and enjoyment that I have with toys. That's what it's supposed to be. Um, and if it's not enjoyable, you shouldn't be doing it. So I got to fight. Fight for the good times, right? That's, that, that's what makes it all worth it. So thank you guys. You are loved. You are appreciated. I want you guys to know, like, Tiny Zangief appreciates you as well. Um, and for Tiny Zangief safe, you know, we're going to power drive a ninja for Tiny Zangief. He, he demands retribution. You know? So, for Tiny Zangief, y'all, thank you so much. And as always, please, be good, do good, drink your water, and do a spinning power driver. Later.